Exercise your brain by shouting out the answers to some brain teasers. What has a head and a tail, but no body? A coin. What's black, white, and blue? A zebra who feels sad. What never gets any wetter, no matter how much it rains? The ocean. Thoughts are powerful little conversations you have in your head that no one else hears but you. You know, thoughts like, what if I fail my test? He's always making fun of me. Will my friends be there? My stomach hurts. I want to go swimming. Thoughts can start off small and go away quickly, or they can grow to be so big and so bad that they ruin everything about your day. Because we are born with the desire to do wrong things, most of our thoughts are not ones that please God. We think about ourselves a lot, and many times we will find ourselves thinking about things that aren't true or right. The devil tricks us into thinking lies, and if we don't pay attention, those thoughts can get us into big trouble and make us feel terrible inside. But God created us to have minds that think, and He gave us the ability to catch our thoughts. When we do, we can check them to see if they match what He says is right and true. God's words have power and can change any thought we have. And when we let Him change the way we think, we'll see that thinking the way God thinks is totally what's best. Think about what is right. Everybody, get on your feet! It's time to sing. Don't live the way the world is. Don't live the way the world is. Let your way of thinking be completely changed. Don't live the way the world is. Don't live the way the world is. Let your way of thinking be completely changed. I can think. I can use my mind to think about what is good. Think about what. Don't live the way the world is. Let your way of thinking be completely changed. Don't live the way the world is. Don't live the way the world is. Let your way of thinking be completely changed. I can think. I can use my mind to think about what is good. To think about what is right. I can. Think that the world has got a lot to say. Our God says that the way we think has got to change. Catch it, check it, see what God has got to say. Let Him change it. You see, there is no better way. There is no better way. Don't live the way the world is. Don't live the way the world is. Let your way of thinking be completely changed. Don't live the way the world is. Don't live the way the world is. Let your way of thinking be completely changed. Don't live the way the world is. Don't live the way the world is. Let your way of thinking be completely changed. Completely changed. Great job. You can take a seat. Memorizing verses from the Bible will help us remember what God says when we're checking our thoughts. Let's see if we can memorize this verse from Romans 12:2 together. Say this after me: Don't live the way the world lives. Let your way of thinking be completely changed. Then you will be able to test what God wants for you, and you will agree that what He wants is right. Romans twelve two. 
Now let's see if you can remember it after we cover up some words. Don't live the way the... Don't live the way the world lives. Let your way of thinking be completely... Let your way of thinking be completely changed. Then you will be able to... Then you will be able to test what God wants for you. And you will... And you will agree that what he wants is right. Romans 12, 2. Way to go! So, I've been thinking about Miriam. Auntie Miriam? She's probably making it rain bingo chips with all of her friends as we speak. Bingo! Not your Auntie Miriam. Miriam in the Bible. Hmm. Never heard of her. Was she a bingo queen too? Not exactly. She was Moses' sister. And there's a lot in her story that we can learn when we look at her thoughts. Oh yeah, I know Moses. He was the guy who convinced that mean Pharaoh to let God's people, you know, the Israelites, go free and lead them through the desert for like a bajillion, zillion years, right? That's the guy. But uh, it was just 40 years. What? Close enough. And wasn't Moses the guy God told to hold his stick out over the Red Sea and watch it part? Yep, right again. And his sister Miriam was there to see it all too. Hooray! But as the Israelites crossed through the Red Sea on dry ground, Pharaoh came chasing after them. This Pharaoh dude, come on, man. Tell me about it. But God made a way for his people to get away safely across the Red Sea. After they made it through, all the water rushed back over the Egyptians with their fancy chariots and huge army. Wa pow! Kazam! Take that, Pharaoh! Yep. When Miriam saw Pharaoh's chariots and horses go into the sea, she grabbed a tambourine and started singing and dancing, praising God for all that he had done for them. Then all of the women followed her, singing and dancing too. I'm feeling a viral video coming on. At Musical Miriam. Coming at you, world. A few thousand years too early, dude. Another fun fact about Miriam, she was also a prophetess. A prof a what now? A prophetess. God gave her messages and she spoke them to his people. Like text messages? Coming from God? Super awesome. Kinda. God used Miriam to do some awesome stuff, but things started to change when her thoughts turned negative about her brother, Moses. Ah, uh, sibling fight, classic. We've all been there, am I right? This wasn't Miriam and Moses getting into arguments over who gets to pick tonight's movie or who called front seat in mom's minivan. Miriam started thinking things about Moses that just weren't right. Like that he was breaking the speed limit or littering or putting pineapple on pizza? That should totally be a crime. No, nothing like that. Miriam and her other brother, Aaron, got seriously jealous and started saying bad things about Moses. Miriam was like, God has spoken through us too. She started thinking that it wasn't fair that Moses was the one who got to be in charge. And now the boxing gloves come out. In this corner, we have the writer of songs, the prophetess Miriam. And in this corner, Moses, the leader of God's people, who will prevail in this epic showdown of sibling rivalry. Whoa, whoa, dude, too far. There wasn't a fight, promise. But God did tell Moses, Aaron, and Miriam to come have a meeting. It's about to get serious. Yep, God came down in a pillar of cloud and spoke to Miriam and Aaron. He reminded them that he is the Lord and he is the one who chooses to speak to Moses face to face very clearly. He asked them why they were saying things that weren't right about Moses and then he left. And mic drop. When the cloud left the place where they were standing, Miriam looked down and realized something wasn't right with her skin. Sunburn? Should have gone with SPF 50 when hanging by the pool, Miriam. No, it was a disease that caused white spots all over her skin. Big yikes. I bet Miriam was like, call an ambulance. I need a doctor. Stat. Well, Moses prayed to God and asked him to heal Miriam. And he did. But there were still consequences for Miriam's wrong thinking. She had to stay outside of their camp for seven days with her skin disease before God healed her. Ouch. That's worse than being grounded and losing uh, your Xbox. Totally. Miriam let her thoughts become too focused on herself, which led to jealous thoughts that just weren't right. Um, hold up. We won't end up with some crazy skin disease when we have wrong thinking, right? Yeah, we probably won't end up with a skin disease when we get jealous or think about wrong things. But God does want us to catch our negative thoughts and let him change them so we can think about what he says is best. And when we test out thinking God's way, We'll see that what he wants us to think about is really what's right. Everybody get on your feet. Strike a pose like the one you see on the screen. See if you can freeze and hold it before it's time for the next one. fun.
on. Now take a seat. Meet Charlie. Charlie is the best player on his basketball team. The dribbling master, distance shooter extraordinaire, and rebounding champ. Known as Charlie Hoops to his teammates, everyone realizes that he's destined for the NBA. At awards night, Coach gives Miles the season MVP award, giving a speech about Miles' awesome attitude and hard work this season. Was Coach even watching the games this year? Miles is definitely the clumsiest, lowest scoring player. Charlie calls him zero points McDropsies in his head. He'd never say it out loud, but he still thinks he's right. He can keep letting his thoughts spiral out of control, pout that he didn't win an award that he thought belonged to him, and remind all of his teammates that he's the real MVP. On second thought, if Coach overhears, that's a quick way for Charlie to spend the next century scrubbing the gym's toilets with a toothbrush. Or Charlie can catch his prideful thoughts and check them by thinking about what God says is right. Like, be humble and give more honor to others than yourself. Or, love your neighbor as you love yourself. If you really keep this law, you are doing what is right. After Charlie checks his thoughts, he can let God change the way he's thinking so he can do what's right and love Miles by congratulating him for his award. And if he's having a hard time doing that, he can pray something like, God, please change my thoughts. The world tells us we should brag about the things that we're good at and do what we can to show others that we are the very best. But when we let God help us change our thoughts, we'll find ourselves thinking about showing love to others, and that's the right thing to do. Think about what is right. Everybody get on your feet. It's time to sing. job. You can take a seat. Recap what we've learned today in exactly 10 words. No more, no less. Thinking. Selfish. Thoughts. Is. Not. Right. Think. Uh, about. 
Um, others? Two! Yes! <laughs> I can think about what is right when I uh get jealous? Miriam's thoughts became focused on things that weren't right. A kaleidoscope, thingamajig, trapezoid, xylophone, stop me! When a mean thought pops in my mind, catch it! Yes! <laughs> Let's practice catching a thought, checking it, and changing it. What is something you've been thinking about a lot lately that's made you feel sad, or worried, or scared, or mad? Maybe you've been thinking about something that someone said to you, or something scary that you saw on TV. Pick one thought that comes to mind. Pretend your thought is a balloon. Now squeeze one hand like you're catching string on the balloon. Hold on to your thought balloon, and let's check it by asking God what he thinks. So tell God what's in your thought balloon and how it makes you feel. Ask God to show you what you should be thinking about. Since you've talked to God about your thought, you can let it go now. Just open up your hand like you're letting go of the balloon. Great job! The next time you have a thought that makes you feel sad, worried, scared, or mad, this is one way you can catch it, check it, and change it. Think about what is right. 